Are we done? Uh, yeah, we're done. Well, then let's uh, switch over. Uh, Adam, the stage is yours. Thank you for joining us. All right. Thank you, guys. I apologize for the uh, the late entry there, but uh, it's uh, it's a pleasure to uh, be with you all today. And uh, thank you for the opportunity to share a little bit about uh, my life and uh, some of the learning along the way. And I hope I can, can add some value that can uh, make a positive impact on, on your lives. Um, so my name's Adam. I, uh, I'm originally from Colorado, in the United States. And now I currently live in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, uh, where I've been living for about eight years now. So uh, I want to share with you guys a little bit about my journey uh, and what I've gone through in order to be here today uh, doing what I do. And just to give a little context, uh, I'm currently the president and founder of a nonprofit organization called Favela Inc., which uh, specializes in helping out small businesses, nonprofits, social projects in low-income communities, so in four communities called favelas. We help these organizations get the skills and the knowledge and the resources that they need so that they can create better businesses and generate more jobs and uh, create a better quality of life in their local communities. So uh, that's, that's what my nonprofit organization does today. And we have a space we call our Hub of Innovation, which is essentially a, a place where like-minded people, people that think similarly uh, from the community, who want to connect and learn and grow can come and work on building their organization and on building themselves. Um, I also have a company called Favela Experience, which is a social impact tourism company. And what that means is we work on creating experiences in these communities, in these favelas, uh, with people from all over the world that help break down stereotypes about the community. So change the way that people think about slum communities. Um, and while creating, building relationships of empathy and connection uh, through tourism. And then the third final organization that I, that I run is called Umano. And uh, that's focused on uh, producing media. So films, uh, we created a, a virtual reality film um, in indigenous communities. So we uh, go to the Amazon and we work with local indigenous communities to help tell their story through digital media. Uh, in new and different innovative ways to share with the world about who they are and all the wisdom that they have there in the forest uh, that they've accumulated. So that's uh, briefly what I'm doing today. But how did, how did this all happen? How did I get here? You know, a, a, uh, a little kid growing up in the countryside of Colorado in a city of 1,000 people. Um, it's not very common that you end up living in Brazil in a slum uh, doing what I do. And so there's a journey that I went on that, that made all of this happen. Growing up in Colorado in the countryside, and I also went to school in the city. So it was about 45 minutes to go to, to school uh, every single day, getting up at five o'clock in the morning and, you know, sleeping very little and living in, in the middle of being caught between city life and country life. And so early on, this created kind of uh, an identity crisis of who am I and where do I belong? And, and I think these are common things that we feel uh, during our, our young years or as adolescents uh, is this question of who I am and where do I belong? Um, and for me, it was very, very strong, this feeling. Um, so within the public school, I was also in a, a, like an accelerated um, honors program. And because of that, within the school itself, we were also very separated from a lot of the other students. And so this again created this separation and created this sense of not belonging. So the, the first challenge that I had to face in life was, you know, being bullied and having to think about who am I and also feeling that I didn't pertain to the group of everyone else. And this can be very <clears throat> disempowering. Sometimes you feel like nobody wants to hear your voice or nobody cares about who you are or what you think. And you become shy and you become closed and you become inside. And so the rest of the next 
uh, 20 years of my life, I had to learn about how to deconstruct that. So how do I open myself back up? How can I live without suffering uh, based on the judgments of other people? So I went through high school and when I moved to uh, Arizona State to go to university, to Phoenix, Arizona, um, the questions come up, you know, everybody's telling you, look, you have to know what you want to do. What's going to be your career? What are you going to study? And when you're 18 years old, you don't know. Sometimes you have things that you really like to do, but you don't always know what you want to do for the rest of your life. And, and I think what I want to share with you guys is it's okay. You don't have to know. And it's okay to go to school. It's okay to go to university and try something out that you think will make you happy, that you think is exciting. And, and along the way, you can change. It's okay. It's all, it's all right to shift um, what you're doing. And you don't have to be a grown-up, uh, 34, 40-year-old grown-up just going into college when you're still trying to figure out who you are. So embrace that opportunity to deconstruct uh, who you think you are and reconstruct through new experiences and through new learning. And so that's what university meant for me. It was like a new beginning. I can be somebody different. So uh, I decided to study business entrepreneurship and uh, social and um, international business, and uh, and through that process, you know they start preparing you in order to enter the business world, to get a job, and to work for a big company. And in my third year of of university, I decided to study abroad. So uh, I was trying to figure out where to go and and what kind of experience that I want to have, and it was very scary to think about going to another country and living there for six months and being with people that I didn't know and, and that don't speak my language. But at the same time, that fear, that discomfort inside me said, go, oh, go for it. See what's on the other side. And so I decided to spend the next six months studying abroad in uh, Argentina and Peru. And through that experience, I was forced to go outside of my comfort zone. And oh, lost my headphone here. And so uh, going outside your comfort zone is something that I've now learned is really important and is a really important thing to do is if it feels a little bit comfortable and you just don't know what to do, go for it. And don't worry about the judgment. Don't worry about the fear of failure because on the other side of discomfort is growth. And every time that we, expand or change or learn something new it's a process of being uncomfortable and then being willing to push through the discomfort to come out on the other side and so that's what studying abroad was for me it was about reconstructing the person that i am by living uh, in a new environment with different people and so i in this experience i, I learned spanish and i traveled around the country and i learned different things and i fell in love with the South American Latin um, culture that's so different from where I grew up. And then I uh, came back to the United States. I finished my university. And when university was over, now all the uh, career fairs start happening in the business to say, okay, now you have to get a job. Now you have to grow up. Now you can't be a kid anymore. You got to get a job. And something inside me said, that's not what I want to do. I want to do something that makes me happy. I want to do something that aligns my passion and my experience with going back to what we like to do with our team is to ask yourself the question, what are the experiences that I want to live in my life? What are all the really cool, interesting things that I would just love to do? Climb a mountain, go scuba diving, learn a new language, all these different experiences. So on that, think about in what ways do I want to grow? So I want to become smarter. Uh, I want to uh, learn a new skill. Um, and the final piece is, is contribution. We're thinking about how do I want to give back to the world? How do I want to contribute in general to to the community around me. So think about these mixes of experiences and growth and contribution 
And if you can put those all together, then you find motivation. And they found studies have found the fourth motivational factor is money. So we have experience, growth, contribution, and then money. So you see that the number one thing that motivates us isn't just about money. And so after I graduated from uh, school, I decided to move to Rio de Janeiro. I had never been to Brazil before. I didn't speak Portuguese, the language. I didn't know anybody, but I decided, you know what, I'm going to go for it. Uh, I feel this calling to go to Brazil. I want to be in South America and uh, I'm going to be willing to leave, live with the discomfort. And so I sold all of my stuff in the United States and I bought a one-way ticket to Brazil. Arriving in Rio, it was very scary at first. As you can imagine, I couldn't understand what anybody was saying. And so I constantly found myself in situations where I had no idea what was going on. Um, but I knew from my past experiences that um, it just was a, a question of time and, and patience and being willing to be present with the discomfort over and over again. And so in that, those initial weeks living in Brazil, I was meeting people all over uh, there. Adam, Rio is not the most dangerous city in the world like most people think. It's not that bad. There's just one rule. You can't go to the favelas. You can't go to the slums. And if you avoid the slums, everything will be fine. So I did that initially, but then I said, why is it that everybody's saying this, yet none of those people have actually ever been there? And so that, that was another major life lesson for me is a lot of times people will tell you things based on what society had, may, may have taught them, but it doesn't mean it's actually based in true fact. And sometimes we have to be willing to uh, push against this, some of the stereotypes uh, of society in order to find uh, our truth on the other side. And so uh, that's, that's what I did. I uh, decided to go into the favela by myself and discover what it was really about. And what I discovered was there was all these beautiful, amazing people living there that um, were so open to receiving me and really were just suffering from uh, discrimination and uh, a lack of people knowing who they are and racism that you see, uh, institutional racism that you see within the country. So I decided I really wanted to create something to help shift that, to, to help create businesses or projects that connect people and that expand our awareness and our consciousness about who people are. Uh, so removing the judgment and removing the fear. That's the objectives of a lot of my businesses and, and something I encourage all of you to think about in your life is how can I remove the fear? How can I be less judgmental? about the things that I don't know? And how can I create an open and positive mind that's willing to look at things in a different way and try to discover all of the beauty that, that exists on the other side? So that's really how things got started. And over the next eight years, I would go on a very long and intense journey of creating different businesses like the, one, like the ones I talk about today and immersing myself in new communities and with different types of people and learning about those people and really spending a lot of time listening. And I, and I think that's one of the biggest pieces of wisdom I have to share is the more you can listen, the better. The less you can talk, the better. The more you can just listen to what people are saying and learn about them and practice emotional intelligence, the, the, the ability to connect with people, the ability to understand why people are the way that they are and without judgment be able to build relationships and friendships. And so for me today, that's the beauty of what I'm doing. I have relationships with people all over the world and I'm so thankful to, uh, to be here with you guys today, uh, building a relationship with all of you and uh, sharing a little bit of our story. So um, I'm about 18 minutes in now, so I, I think it'd be good to uh, open it up if there's some questions. Well, actually, we started a bit later, so it's not really a big issue. You can you can have all the, the, the time we need because yeah, we started. Okay. Late. So, Ellie, anyway, any any teenager wants to jump in about this extraordinary life story and uh, and uh, experiences you heard from from Adam at the moment? Yes, I have a question, uh, Adam. Uh, besides your nonprofits, uh, you which which businesses that you've created? 
uh, have succeeded? Yeah, so great question. So the current business that I have right now um, is Favela Experience. So that's my social impact tourism company. And oh, uh, yeah, and we've received, um, let me think, over almost 40,000 people from all over the world in more than 10 different communities throughout the city. Um, so that's, that's my company that, that helps generate profit and income. And then the nonprofit works in complement to that. And I also have a new business that, uh, that I'm starting now uh, that I hope to be launching soon that's called Da Floresta, which is focused on uh, connecting people to indigenous cultures and selling different types of nature-based products from the forest, plant medicines, uh, artisanal goods that the indigenous people produce, things like that. All right. Thank you very much, Adam. Thank you. By the way, gr great story. Great story. Very, very <laughs> Impactful. <laughs> Thank you. I have a question. Yeah. So I am kind of like in the same boat as you. I grew up in a very, very small city. I still currently live there. And I do plan on going to um, Grand Canyon University in Phoenix in the fall whenever campus is open next year. And nonprofit is actually something that I've like very much looked into and kind of wanting to do. Right now, I'm set up for um, majoring in behavioral health. And that is kind of what they said to kind of um, study in order to get there, if that's what I truly want to do. But what's your advice on what I should be studying in order to kind of dive into these communities and help whatever I can to give back to the world? Fantastic question. Well, congratulations on just wanting to do that. Just, just that desire to, to go on that path is amazing. Uh, so what kind of where, where, and what kind of nonprofit would you see yourself creating or being a part of? Doing what or where? Um, I really advocate for like um, helping the homelessness or helping um, low income communities, especially through like arts. And I don't really know exactly what I want to do, but I know that I definitely want to make a change in the world. And I know that maybe like even one day working for a nonprofit or starting my own nonprofit, just kind of leading to that path. Mm. Yeah. So my, my suggestion to you would be, first of all, what, what we study in our undergraduate years, unless you're going to become a doctor or an engineer or a scientist or something like that, doesn't really matter that much. And what's important is that it's something that's interesting to you because the reality is if you want to work with homeless people, for example, any of the different, different areas that you study can be applied in that context. So if you study psychology or if you study behavioral science, all of those things are going to provide you with different ways of looking at the same problem and are going to be valuable to you in some way. But what I would recommend that you do uh, in parallel is look for an organization where you can volunteer at right now. Somebody that's doing really amazing work with homeless people or communities that you care about that you can go and join and give a few hours a week and learn doing with them and, and build relationships with, with that organization right now. And I think you'll see that that will be the most educational, strong learning experience that you can have. And within university, just look for something that, 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 that makes you passionate. Because once you graduate school, if you can figure out a way to combine passion with the fact that you care about homeless people, any nonprofit organization is going to feel that energy from you and, the, and they're going to be willing to, to, to give you an opportunity for a job or you're going to be able to create something that actually impacts people's lives because running a nonprofit is really, really challenging. And so you have to really love what you're doing. If there's no passion, then you're not going to be successful or you're going to suffer. So that, that would be my, my, my suggestion to you. Does that make sense? Does that help? Yeah, that makes perfect sense. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Anybody else? You were saying that you really your profit organization is tourism. Do I understand correct? You are uh, trying to help uh, people from all over the world to to look at where you're living now, or is it like a tourism company which, like, uh, you can go all over Brazil, or you you have a tourist company which really 
brings people to the to the slums or the favelas. I don't know the the, the correct name. Are you, or you're doing both? Yeah. So we're a social impact tourism company. So uh, focused specifically on favelas, on slum communities, and. The idea, the idea is really about how can we break down negative stereotypes about uh, low-income communities, right? So most people don't realize there's this amazing plethora of knowledge and incredible people and creativity and businesses and things to be discovered within the communities. But, you know, traditional um, commercial tourism uh, is just based around going to the beach or going to the Christ yeah. statue or to these, yeah. you know, these typical activities. And so we, I built the company from the inside of the community out. So I moved into the favela and I said, if I were from the favela, how would I want a tourism company to exist and to work here in a way that's in alignment with being from here? And so I spent a lot of time, I, I visited over 120 favela communities during that process, learning about the local people and asking them, how they wanted to be doing tourism. And so today, all of our experiences in tours are guided by local people, are offered, are, are serviced by local organizations. We only hire local uh, service providers in the community. And uh, yeah, and in that way, we, we try to open up the whole world that comes here uh, to be able to, to get to know the community. But the long-term vision is about how can we scale that mentality to other different types of communities. I think that's something special and I think uh, obviously you had, uh, I don't know how many thousand you mentioned, I forgot the exact number of people really joining and really having a look in, um, in, a, in a community which is not really accessible usually. So creating an impact, a social impact and decreasing the, the, uh, the stereotypes that um, I think most of us have because most of us don't know. And most of us are afraid or scared or because we hear it's dangerous because you're going to get killed and whatever, you know, all the stereotypes. I think I can go on and on and on as you could go on before you went there. And I think it's a very nice, very nice uh, initiative. And obviously you generate money in order to be able to, to support like your so-called nonprofit organization, which really helped from the inside out this the communities to grow or whatever to develop in a way they want to develop and not in the way we want them to impose we want to impose them to develop to and i think that's really the way to to start the sustainable change and to, to to create sustainable change in such communities which is something that i think many 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 even governmental organizations failed in uh, because of i, I just, thousands reasons maybe this may be a little parameter and uh, working on that there are other reasons as well of course so i am not judging them they do the best as well but i think what you are doing is real or and i think that what you are doing is really very impressive and interesting initiative uh, and actually um we had uh, it's time to switch over to the next uh, to the next speaker Thank you very much for joining us, and I right. hope and I hope if if you really um, are willing to give you some some uh, uh, links or or, or um, information about either the tourist organization or the non-profit uh, initiative or a link to what you are doing. So in case one of the teenager um, is interested in getting getting closer to you and really getting engaged to you. Thank you very much for joining us and have a nice morning, I guess, in your place. <laughs> morning? Yeah, it's a, it's almost it's a 1 p.m. So we're well. So have a nice uh, yeah. early afternoon. Have a nice lunch there in your place. And thank you again for being here. And please feel free to listen to the next speaker.